Hello everyone, this is the daily devotional video for March 28, 2017. I apologize for how I look. I ran an errand earlier today and I've been outside and the wind is brutal. So I'm sorry for how I look. Um, so our, our uh, passage for today is the book of Matthew, which is the first book in the New Testament. Matthew chapter 6, we're reading verses 16 through 20. Moreover, when you fast, do not be like the hypocrites, with a sad countenance. For they disfigure their faces, that they may appear to men to be fasting. Assuredly, I say to you, they have their reward. But you, when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face, so that you do not appear to men to be fasting, but to your Father who is in, in a secret place. And your father, who sees in secret, will reward you openly. Do not lay up for yourselves treasures, honors, where moth and rust destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust destroys, and where thieves do not break in and steal. And the title for today's devotional is Our Rewards in Heaven. Our Rewards in heaven, plural. Have you ever thought about what type of rewards you are going to receive when you get to heaven? The Bible explains the criteria that God will use to determine these rewards and what kind of conduct will deserve them. When we stand before the judgment seat of Christ, we will be judged on the basis of the light we have received. That is the truth that God has made available to us, and what we have done with the opportunities we were given. Furthermore, we find that some specific actions and attitudes will result in certain rewards. For instance, we are told in the book of Matthew that there is a great reward stored up in heaven for those who are insulted and persecuted for Jesus' sake. Reference to Matthew 5, 11, and 12. Elsewhere, the Lord tells us the acts of kindness done for his followers will be noted and rewarded in Matthew 25, 40. Even a cup of water given to a thirsty disciple will not be overlooked on Judgment Day, Matthew 10, 42. Included among the rewarded are those whom God calls to leave family and personal possessions for the sake of the gospel. Another action that draws the Father's special attention is love directed toward our enemies. For this behavior, there will be a great reward, and we will be called sons of the Most High, Luke 6.35. Sometimes others seem to prosper and reap a great harvest without even noticing how we prepared the soil. Yet God assures us that neither the one who plants nor the one who waters will be overlooked. 1 Corinthians 3.8 The Lord sees each detail, and everything done for his sake will be rewarded. I think about that a lot, that, that thing that the Bible talks about um, from uh, 1 Corinthians 3.8. But somebody looks that verse up. Well, oh, there, there, hold on. 1 Corinthians, whoops, went too far. Corinthians chapter 3, verse 8. Yeah. yeah. Verse 7 says, So then neither he who plants is anything, nor he who waters, but God who gives the increase. Now he who plants and he who waters are one, and each one will receive his own reward according to his own labor. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kind of try to explain it the way I understand it. As most of you may already know what that means. You may understand what that what they're talking about, you know. But let's say, let's take a hypothetical person, and we're going to name him Joe. And let's say that I show Joe kindness in some way. I buy his he and I are friends. I buy his lunch, or I do this, and I I kind of talk to him about what God's done in my life. And he's not a Christian. Um, and so I talked to him about what God did in my life and how amazing God is to me and, and to people and to, to everyone and and all that stuff. And then 
somebody else comes into Job's life and they um, are able to pray with him. Okay, they're able to pray with him, read the scriptures to him, give him a Bible to read. Another person comes along, maybe a pastor or somebody else comes along in Joe's life, and Joe at that point is ready to accept Jesus. But we all have a part in it. Some of us plant a seed, which means that some of us kind of put the thought of Christianity, of Jesus, accepting Jesus, in, into his mind, into his heart. We plant the seed. Some people fertilize it, you know, or water it by, you know, doing other things. So each, each one of us plays a part in bringing people to the Lord. And no one is any greater or any less than the others. We're all working together. So I love that idea. I'm going to read that, that again in the devotional. It says, um, <clears throat> Sometimes others seem to prosper and reap a great harvest without even noticing how we prepare the soil. Yet God assures us that neither the one who plants nor the one who waters will be overlooked. The Lord sees each detail and everything done for his sake will be rewarded. That's an awesome thought. Have a blessed day, guys. I love you so much. I'm going to go ahead and go. I will see you guys again tomorrow.